Hey guys, today we'll be having a look at energy systems. This is one of the most difficult areas for students to understand. So please pause, rewind, um, look up different YouTube videos, uh, look up any type of other source that you can to try and understand this concept. There's always a lot of exam questions about it, particularly interplay, which will be in another um, video. But today we'll just be looking at the basic energy system structures. So first up, you've got two types, anaerobic and aerobic. Anaerobic means that there is no oxygen present when processing energy. Aerobic means oxygen is present. So I always try and remember aerobic has the sound of air in it, which means oxygen. Just don't get confused when you speak about this in an exam response and you say that there's air present. It's not. It's specifically oxygen. So there's two types of anaerobic energy systems. So two types of ways to produce energy when there's no oxygen present. One is using the ATP PC system and the other is using the anaerobic glycolysis system. This used to be known as the lactic acid system. The VCAR study design has been revised. Um, so whenever you refer to this system, it must be anaerobic glycolysis, not lactic acid. If you um, make an exam response with lactic acid system in it, they won't acknowledge that response and you won't get any marks. The aerobic side um, just has one system and that's the aerobic system, but the aerobic system is the one that uses carbs, fats and proteins um, in different ways to produce energy. So first of all, what is energy? Energy is adenosine triphosphate, which is what I mentioned in a previous video. And you've got the adenosine molecule there with three phosphate molecules. Now, when you actually need energy for a muscular contraction, what happens is that phosphate at the end will break off and energy is released. So when you're exercising, basically what happens is over and over again, uh, phosphates are breaking off ATP molecules. Um, what it does form is an ADP molecule, which is adenosine diphosphate. The di means two because you've left over with um, two phosphate molecules. Now the problem is you can't really use that for energy. So the whole point of an energy system is to recreate the ATP. So to join phosphate molecules back on to the ADPs, so you can come up with lots of ATP. So the ATP is the one that you need to create the energy, but you need to reconstruct that during an energy system um, so you have more of them to use during muscular contraction. Obviously, there's other things that you would need ATP for, such as thinking, um, just sitting there, you need it because obviously your um, digestive muscles are working as well. Any cellular process basically needs ATP, but for our causes, because we're doing an exercise course, um, we're just looking at muscular contraction. Okay, so first of all, we'll look at the ATP PC system. It's the easiest um, and most simplest energy system to understand. It's the one that you will use during explosive movements. And the reason for that being is the rate at which energy can be formed is really, really fast. And the reason for that being is because it's such a simple process. So you've got there on the screen an adenosine diphosphate, which is the um, adenosine and two phosphates. And we need to reconstruct that into an ATP. So to do that, what happens in the ATP PC system is you've got another molecule there called PC or CP, otherwise known as phosphocreatine or creatine phosphate. It doesn't really matter what way you say it, um, but for our purposes, I'll probably call it PC or phosphocreatine. So you'll notice that there is an extra little P or a phosphate on the PC. So that actually breaks off and joins up to the ATP. Now the energy um, that has moved there means that the energy that um, is released when the PC snaps in half is used to join it back on to the ATP because you need energy to join things back up. And the whole process of that occurring means you result in one ATP. Now you've got about uh, about 10 seconds worth of phosphocreatine in your muscles. So that can happen for about 10 seconds. 
maybe 12 if you're lucky and then that basically finishes the only way to replenish this system is by rest no active recovery just rest so for phosphocreatine molecules to um, recover and um, replenish inside the muscles you just need to be sitting still if you move about um, that's not going to work Okay, so the second energy system is also anaerobic, so no oxygen, and it's called anaerobic glycolysis. Now, I mentioned earlier that it used to be known as the lactic acid system, um, and that's because lactic acid is actually a byproduct or the end result of this system. So we start off with glycogen, which is the stored form of um, sugars in your muscles, and that breaks down into glucose because glucose is the um, the molecule form that you can actually use during this process. Now what happens is the glucose is converted into pyruvic acid. So when that happens you end up with energy and that energy then creates um, a situation where you can join a phosphate back onto the adenosine diphosphate. So then you end up with ATP again and doing this actually results in two ATP. The problem is though that there's no oxygen present. So then you end up with a byproduct called lactic acid. Now it used to be thought that lactic acid was the culprit for the sore muscles, um, but it's not actually. It's when lactic acid gets processed even further and it breaks down into lactate and hydrogen ions. Now the hydrogen ions are the ones that create um, an unpleasant um, environment for the muscles and that's what actually causes the pain in your muscles afterwards so when people say to do a cool down and to remove the lactic acid yes you want to remove it but the thing that actually causes the pain is the hydrogen ions themselves so we'll go through that one more time glycogen breaks down to glucose glucose is converted into pyruvic acid now when there's no oxygen that pyruvic acid um, allows enough energy for 2 ATP to be reconstructed and it also results in lactic acid being formed and the lactic acid breaks down even further into lactate and hydrogen ions. The last energy system is the aerobic system now this one is when there's um, energy or sorry when there's oxygen present so it looks very similar to anaerobic glycolysis the word glycolysis means um, the breakdown of sugar because glyco means sugar lysis is basically process or breakdown so we start off with glycogen again the stored form in the muscles it breaks down to glucose because that's the form we need and again it converts into pyruvic acid. So these three steps are the same as anaerobic glycolysis. And also you end up with two ATP. But something different happens from this point on. So pyruvic acid is then converted into a chemical called acetyl coenzyme A. Now you don't really have to know what acetyl coenzyme A is, you just have to know it exists. Because what happens to it is when there's oxygen around, it actually enters um, another process called the Krebs cycle and the reason for that being is because we can squeeze some more energy out of it to create some more ATP. Unfortunately it's only two more ATP but as a result of this we end up processing carbon dioxide and hydrogen ions. Now in this case the hydrogen ions are a good thing because they go into one more process called the electron transport chain. So, so far we've got um, the acetyl coenzyme A, it's gone into the Krebs cycle. The Krebs cycle has spat out some energy and it's also spat out some carbon dioxide and hydrogen ions. Those ions have then gone into the electron transport chain. Now, all of these are just chemical processes. It's not like you have little merry-go-rounds going on inside your muscles. It's just how the chemicals are being processed and all with the help of enzymes. Now the electron transport chain is the key player here. So it processes the hydrogen ions and converts them into enough energy to create 34 more ATP and also some water, H2O, and some more carbon dioxide, CO2. So when people talk about the aerobic system, 
Um, normally they say you need some glucose or some sugars plus some oxygen and that creates ATP, carbon dioxide, water and heat is also a byproduct. But heat in this case we can't really display with um, a chemical form. So with the aerobic system you can also use fats and proteins. We'll just have a look at the, pro uh, the fats. So aerobic glycolysis was with the sugars aerobic lipolysis is with the fats because fats are otherwise known as lipids so that lip part has gone into lipolysis so it's a little bit different we start off with fats that are stored in the adipose tissue they break down into glycerol and free fatty acids and they undergo something called beta oxidation now the reason for that being is we need to get to acetyl coenzyme A which is what was mentioned in the previous energy system so acetyl coenzyme A is the one that we can use and send it into the Krebs cycle but uh, the fat doesn't actually get processed the same way as glucose does fat doesn't get turned into pyruvic acid and then acetyl coenzyme A fats just basically undergo that beta oxidation and then turn into acetyl coenzyme A so from there on it's exactly the same as the aerobic glycolysis so acetyl coenzyme A will go um, with oxygen into the Krebs cycle again it will spit out two ATP and carbon dioxide and hydrogen ions then those hydrogen ions will go into the electron transport chain spit out enough energy for 34 ATP and water and carbon dioxide now in total the aerobic system can well if you've added it all up will spit out 38 ATP in total which is a lot more energy compared to say the um, ATP PC system which was only creating one ATP here you're creating 38 ATP so just in summary uh, you've got the ATP PC system its fuel is PC or phosphocreatine and it can barely create one ATP based off that um, that fuel so the problem is it works really really quickly but you don't get a lot out of it and not for very long so 10 seconds tops the anaerobic glycolysis anaerobic meaning no oxygen present glycolysis meaning using sugars um, its fuel is the glycogen which is the stored fuel of sugar and the ATP yield is two ATPs the aerobic system on the other hand is the most um, the most yielding energy system I suppose it creates 30 ATP but it can't do it very quickly so it's at the cost of speed and it can utilize glycogen fats and proteins the proteins are the only ones that we didn't discuss today so I hope that makes sense please rewind and pause and um, make sure you understand each process make sure you write down the diagrams and say it to yourself in your head um, and maybe write a flowchart to help understand. Okay, thanks for watching.